Hi guys, this is Christophe from The Bar Upstairs, part of our weekly video. Today we're gonna discuss the difference between the old world and the new world wine. The wine referred to the old world are actually all the wine from continental Europe, including Middle, uh, Middle East. And what refer to the new world have been actually colonized country by the British and Portuguese and Spanish. So that's America, Canada, South America, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, and all the rest, including India and China. Mainly the main difference between new world and old world, the old world been through some years and centuries of uh, law and tradition as a new world have been starting with some more younger fresh basis so of course they have a much more modern approach of wine right on the test side the new world will be much more uh, concentrate on the fruits the fruit is much more forward the expression of the grape first and then the oak can be as well a little bit prominent, much more on the front. Uh, the old world, oak will be much more behind, the fruit will be much more hidden, so it's much more about maturations for a few years of cellaring, so it's much more complexity, depth, concentration. The new world have the tendency to make the label very easy to read for consumers. For example, they tend to bring the grapes, usually have a description of the wine before uh, at the back of the label. So of course, they make it very, very easy for the consumer to cook it by wine. As for the old world, again, classically a bottle of French wine, the French label will be much more intimidating with a lot of low and a lot of things which will require a little bit of knowledge to read the label. As well on the new world, the vast majority of wine are for very easy uh, consumption, so as soon as they are produced, with some very, very minimum cellaring, the wine is ready to be drunk within a few months of production. Usually, European wines, French, Italian, Spanish, required a few years of cellaring, only by law, but as well as the style of regional. In the old world, as well, you ha we have a very strong sense of wines, which is local to the local ground. For example, uh, north of Italy and south of Italy have some very well-designed area where the wine have to express itself. Right, on the price point of view, usually the new old wine tend to be relatively affordable. There are some exceptions, of course, who go to the high hands, like a, a Penfold Grange, a lot of different kind of wines. Uh, Louis Estates, for example, from Australia, which are a bit pricey, but very fine wines. But usually they are made for easy consumptions, little glass of wine. In the old world, we tend to have wine with food. So you choose your food first, and then you have the wine to go with it. The new world have introduced the fashion of wine can be drunk by itself. You can have a glass of wine as an aperitif by itself without any food. So of course, it's a little bit of a game changer, a little bit of more modern approach and breaking a little bit this view of the wine is only for professionals and sommeliers. So mainly it's very easy, the choice is yours. If you want a new old wine, you will have a wine which is usually, I forgot to mention that the new world usually tend to have a, a hotter climate, uh, as the exception of Argentina, which is the mountain. Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, warmer climate, which means uh, riper fruits, higher content of alcohol. So obviously the new old wine will be much more powerful in flavor. The old world will be much more a moderate level of alcohol. Climate is very, very different. So obviously you will have something a bit more into this uh, complexity and style. If you want something very easy to be drunk and have a little bottle for a fiver, uh, then you go for a new world. And of course, maybe the old world will give you uh, a bit more choices if you want to match a complex food uh, with complex wine. Okay, another point which is quite valid as well, it, the old world has been ruled by some very strict rules. European law, French law, local law, Burgundy laws. Of course, the wine supplier, the winemaker, uh, cannot do what he wants. He has to do the wine on a way the government or the law ask him to. In a new world, the law are much more flexible, so you can blend whatever grapes you want, you can grow in whatever kind of wine. So, of course, that have open much more options and a lot of diversity of wines, blending Chardonnay with Sauvignon, which in Europe was actually quite rare to find, uh, mixing Pinot Grigio with Pinot Noir, whatever kind of grapes. So of course, you are, that have created a lot of different kind of style of wine, which in the old world you wouldn't have found because of course the strict regulation wouldn't allow the winemaker to do so. Right, so I think that's it for this week. If you have any more comments, you can go on our Facebook page, Bar Upstairs, if you have any questions regarding about wine, that would be easier. Otherwise, pop yourself at the Bar Upstairs, come to see me so we can have a little chat about wine. And thank you for watching and see you next week.